Hey, how's it going? Thanks so much for checking out this video. Well, it's been about 10 years since I bought my Gretsch Electromatic G5420T. I initially got this guitar because I spent so many years playing solo acoustic that I felt right at home on a hollow body electric guitar. There's been many stretches of years where this has been my number one, my only guitar. I've sold pretty much everything else, but I've always hung on to this guitar. But today, I'm gonna to put this thing through the ringer. I'm gonna do an extensive demo using clean tones, every single pickup, dirty tones, high gain stuff, lead tones, everything I can possibly throw at this thing. And at the end, I'm gonna tell you if this is still my number one or have I moved on with my life? Let's find out. Once again, I'm using the Boss ME90 for all of my tones today. For all of the clean tones, I'm actually on the, just the natural setting. It's one of Boss's uh, sounds in their AIRD series, which actually is in their higher end products too, not just this lower end stuff. When I say lower end, I just mean it's uh, inexpensive, you know, it's still very high quality. Um, but yeah, I'm on the natural. Um, actually, these don't really represent uh, the settings. I really have most everything in the middle and just a little bit of the spring reverb. My signal chain is the same again. I'm plugged into my Alesis Multimix 8, um, which I haven't added any EQ to that. And then it's going through my Focusrite 2i2, which is still kind of giving me some shit. <laughs> it's been giving me some problems. And I'm going into Reaper. This is my DAW. Uh, for some of that super high gain, it did get a little fizzy there. So I did drop some of the, like the kind of 10K out. But otherwise, everything is right down the middle. So you can kind of get an idea of how everything sounds. Today for all the drive sounds, I'm using the X high gain 
uh, which is kind of martially sounding to me. Again, most everything is in the middle. I did drop the bass down a little bit. I boosted the mids and the treble. And again, just a little bit of that spring reverb to kind of give it an amplex sound. So here's some drive tones. Alright, today for the high gain stuff, I'm using Juggernaut. <laughs> Isn't that the guy from the, you know, it was in Deadpool? Oh my god! Juggernaut! Woo! I thought that was you! He's like, Juggernaut, huge fan. So, I don't know, man. I'm definitely ready to see the um, Deadpool and Wolverine movie. But yeah, Juggernaut. Gain for this one, I, I bumped it up to like 60 on here, which is a decent amount of gain. Um, again, the... All the EQ settings are pretty much right where they are, right there. Uh, and then again, I have this a little bit of spring reverb. So let's check out the Juggernaut, Juggernaut which is a, yeah, definitely a high gain setting. <laughs>
Lastly, for the lead tones, I went back to the X high gain. Uh, I, I did boost the gain a little bit again, probably about the same, about 60 to 75%. Definitely a, a decent amount of gain. I have a little bit of the spring reverb, but then this time too, I added some of the tape delay. And uh, again, just uh, the repeats are kind of like tongue, tongue, tongue. There's like three little repeats. And uh, yeah, definitely kind of fills out the sound for the lead tone. Well, once again, my friends, I did my best to my ability to put this thing through Ringer, show you everything it has to offer. Uh, I definitely love the clean tones on this still. And when it comes to grit and dirt and overdrive, I mean, you can't really beat the, uh, the bridge humbucker. Actually, these are called Filtertron pickups. And they are like a humbucking pickup, but they definitely have a unique sound that's different than a PAF pickup, for example. It has, uh, it has like a honk, it has like a twang. Uh, you know, I can see why these are used so much in rockabilly and even some country music and stuff. It definitely has that kind of drawl, you know? Um, and definitely, you know, with the hollow body, you get like a really robust full body sound. It's really just fat and big, just like the body. There's a lot of resonance. Um, so what do I think about this thing after 10 years of owning it? You know, I, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the pots. I've never have been the biggest fan of these pots. Um, for example, this one, I've had to like get in there and try to spray it down with deox so many times it just gets crackly and, and it's nothing against Gretsch, uh, when it comes to how difficult it is to service this guitar, it's any kind of hollow body. You have to take pickups off and you have to try to get your hand up underneath into the body. And it's kind of a pain in the ass. I'm not going to lie to like get at these electronics where, for example, my strat, you can just take off the pick guard. Everything's right there, ready to go again, though. That's just the design of this kind of guitar, any kind of hollow body, just not just Gretsch. It could be any brand that has a hollow body. So I would definitely someday I'm, I'm looking to replace all of these pots, you know, actually a few years after I got this guitar, um, Gretsch had a new electromatic that came out that had the treble bleed pots. These ones too, when you roll off the volume on here, you lose a lot of treble, you lose all your high end. So I don't usually use these a whole lot. I would love to be able to blend these pickups more, you know, kind of, turning them up and down and try to blend them more, but you lose so much high end doing that. It really doesn't add anything. It just takes away. So if I can even get those treble bleed pots that the new Gretsch Electromatics had, that would be pretty rad. The trade off though, is that the newer ones don't have these cool cloud inlays. I tell you guys that I'm not a specs guy. I'm really not, but I am like an aesthetics guy. And so like when I look at guitars, you know, if I see like these cool, uh, like hump, lock inlays, cloud inlays, whatever they're called. I do think those are cooler than the, the like little thumbnail inlays. Um, but I can imagine though, if they spent more on the pots, they probably skimped a little bit on, on the inlays. That's maybe how they were able to justify the cost of that. Um, this bridge has been something to be desired. Uh, I definitely should replace it. For example, like this G like just falls out of place all the time. I'm constantly having to push it back into place. Intonating it is kind of a bitch, especially the low E. Uh, I definitely have to get a new bridge at some point. Now, everybody's gonna be wondering about the Bigsby tremolo system and the tuners. These are these like open back vintage style tuners. 
I honestly have never had issues with intonation and, uh, or at least going out of tune. Like intonation's kind of tough sometimes to set, but once it's in tune, it stays in tune. Even if you're wailing on the, on the Bigsby, uh, you know, I, I do grease the nut with graphite and that definitely helps, but I've never had a tr trouble with this staying in tune. I can wail on this thing all night and it stays in tune. I definitely need to lower the action quite a bit. Playing those uh, solos at the end there was damn near impossible. I really need to set this guitar up again. It's been a minute since I played it because I've I've been doing so many videos with the with the Stratocaster and doing stuff on you know with that and shows. So, um, but yeah, man, when it comes down, is this my number one still? I don't know. I'm not a real sentimental guy. Like, it might sound weird, but guitars for me are tools. You know, like. I, I don't know. I probably would be sad to ever sell this. I've considered selling this guitar before to be, buy some stuff. I've been going through this phase lately where I've been really just craving variety, like something new. I think that's a big reason why I ended up getting a multi effects and you know buying the Stratocaster. I'm looking at maybe hopefully down the road getting some more guitars because I've been craving like different sounds. You know, like the one thing about this Gretsch is that I, I had it for so long that I don't want to say I got bored with it, but like sometimes you need something to keep inspired, you know, and like having the Boss ME90 and this bevy of effects. I haven't even gotten into the RC600 loop station I have down here on the floor. That's got tons of effects in it. I have the synth pedal that has effects and just different pickup combinations. And I don't know, I've just been craving variety and just different tones. I don't know if you guys can relate to that. Let me know. Do you guys, any of you guys ever have a Gretsch Electromatic uh, G5420T? Uh, let me know in the comments if you've ever had this guitar, if you've ever been interested in this guitar. Uh, I wish every guitar came in orange because this is this just pops. And um, it became this whole thing where I got the guitar and then my wife bought me a pair of orange Converse. And then just on happenstance, I bought an orange amp just because I thought it sounded good, but it just it fit my whole orange and black thing. So that became like my whole shtick for a while. And it still kind of is. I, I really do wish every guitar came in orange. <laughs> I, I would buy an orange guitar in every brand if I could, but you know, you really can't beat this paint job. So guys, thank you so much again. I guess in conclusion, um, I don't know, man, this is definitely always gonna be towards the top. It, it definitely has a unique sound. Um, I know Rick Fortis of the band Guns N' Roses plays Gretsch's a lot. Um, and honestly, Gretsch, where it really does shine is that kind of rockabilly stuff, that kind of westerny, like gypsy kind of, uh, you know what I mean? Like you put some like clean vibrato with lots of like reverb, something like uh, Chris Isaac's um, I Don't Want to Fall in Love or like Joe Bonamassa's uh, Drive. Um, you know, it's funny, Joe Perry uses a Gretsch on the solo to do looks like a lady. And you can hear that kind of honk like, that, a, that a Gretsch has, that kind of like twang that a Gretsch has. You can hear that in the solo to do looks like a lady. Um, you also can hear it in um, the band Fastball has that. They made up their mind and they started walking. The everybody knows the road that they walked on is paved in gold. If you remember that song from the 90s, that's played on a Gretsch. And you have those like kind of you know, those kind of like rake picks, they sound so good on the Gretsch and the solo again has that kind of boxy twang. So that's where this thing shines. But I, I assure you, you can, I think any guitar, man, any kind of guitar, you can play any style of music. It's, it's all up to you. You know, you can find different sounds, different tones. What I've been trying to do lately too, is try to get out of the side of the box. I'm trying to maybe like not always just be on the bridge pickup for a hard rock sound. Maybe I could try blending. Maybe I can try the middle position. Maybe I can try single coil combinations. You know what I mean? I've been trying to get out of like just doing the same thing everybody else does. So, all right guys, again, man, thank you so very much for uh, watching these videos. I've been having a lot of fun making them. I'm hoping you're enjoying watching them. If you are, please like, share, comment, subscribe, ring the bell. You know, I put chapters in these now to make it a lot more easy to find, but I definitely encourage you to um, watch the whole thing because it gives me a freaking fighting chance in this crazy algorithm out there. But uh, yeah, my other videos I have now, um, my latest ones, like my live looping ones and my other guitar uh, demos now have chapters too. So I definitely, uh, you know, you definitely go back and watch those old videos. Now they have the chapters and you can kind of go through and pick your favorite parts or pick the parts you're more, most interested in and skip to them. I definitely think that'll help. If you guys want to take it a step further, please 
behind me is my wall of patrons, man. Hexkin Papa, Chuck Johnson, Duke McDonald, K. Ritchie. I appreciate these guys so very much. Check out patreon.com slash one ray music. It's starting at only $3 a month. I do have other tiers too, if you're interested, uh, including like where you can like chat with me, like do Skype sessions. I've been having a lot of fun with those with my patrons, those little Skype sessions. So definitely look into that. But yeah, the $3 a month, man, I have over 600 posts of all my former like social media content, a lot of like ideas that are now defunct. I tried so many different paths over the years of so many different types of content and some of them didn't really work out, but instead of just throwing them away, I put them on Patreon and now only you can see them. So check that out. And yeah, guys, I will see you in the next video soon. I'll have another guitar review, something a little different, a little bit special. I think you won't be expecting. And I definitely will have more reviews and live looping and you name it, anything about music I will be doing. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.